Hey, what is up everyone? And today I'm taking a look at this right here. Mosho's Takeda Shingen. It's a big old red awesome samurai mech. Let's check it out. So I will admit I saw only a few pictures of this before it came out knocking around on Instagram and the one thing I didn't notice about it, I noticed it was awesome, but I did not notice it was this huge. I did not know that. This thing is absolutely blowing my mind. So first off, I will mention that this was sent on to me by Gundam Central. I got my Zero Gravity Judge from them and then a couple of more model kits which are this right here which is the Dragon Momoko Death Scythe Hell as well as this big black mystery box which I think is by Deban, but it is a model kit of the Metal Build Strike Freedom that is, well, on the wrong side of a Bandai license. But yeah, they pretty much figured out who I was for my orders and sent me on this. And I am so grateful. It is so cool. It's one of those things that I would have seen the pictures of and went, Oh, that looks pretty cool, yeah. But not have really grasped the gravity of what this is. So I might as well describe that. This is a huge action figure with a metal frame with a whole lot going on. Let's check it out. So first off, inside of the box, we do have the figure itself, which I've already taken out. On top of that, in the first layer, we've got a whole bunch of hands, and these look very, very nice. Underneath that, then, this is when things get serious. We've got three different big old katanas. I mean, one katana is usually enough, but yeah, three. Then we've got something I love. This is a stand made out of metal, because the Takeda Shingen right here has magnets on the bottom of its feet. I've never seen this before, and I love it. Underneath that, we've got even more. An axe, axe parts, some joints. One very nice addition to this box is this little black envelope right here. Inside of this, we've got what is essentially the manual, which is half manual with all the information on what this can and can't do. Well, more so what it can do. And on the other side is a kind of comic or manga, which I assume is giving some plot about whatever world or characters have to do with this particular mecha right here. It is in Chinese, the entire manual is, but all of the instruction parts are extremely clear, so that shouldn't be a problem. Yeah, there is a lot. So there is the overview of absolutely everything that comes in this box. And this is fully loaded. Let's start with the mecha itself. So jumping right on in with the aesthetics, and I don't even know where to start with this. There is so much going on. The first thing I can say is without a single doubt, this is gobsmacking. Does that make sense? Gobsmacking? Gobsmacked? I'm gobsmacked? <laughs> but yeah, it's awesome. Everything about this is absolutely breathtaking. The overall look is imposing, huge, it's heavy in the hand. The color on this is phenomenal. I was going around completely combing the surface of this looking for some kind of error or screw up, but there is zero. The colors on this are fantastic. We've got at least two shades of red, a very nice shade of gold, black, gunmetal, probably more, and we've got that undeniably beautiful glint of real diecast metal. If that wasn't cool enough, we've got another awesome little extra in this, and that is if you pop off the top of its head, you can put in two batteries. What you'll need, according to this, is an AG4, but for me, the AG4s I had did not fit, so I had to use what it says on this packet are AG1s, or LR621s. But yeah, a pair of batteries in the head only means one thing, this has light-up eyes, which is always pretty awesome. However, I'll probably forget to ever change the batteries. On top of the absolutely phenomenal silhouette and the incredibly perfect paint job, we also have a bunch of decals tastefully all over the surface, mainly up on the shoulders, around on the armored parts like the side skirts, down on the legs, and they just add to it, not too over the top, and look beautiful. Also, it says 02 up here. Are we getting a 01? Is there a 01? Will we be getting a Date Masamune? Is there one? Either way, I want to see more of these. These are cool. Anyway, onto that full spin. So this big old mecha right here has the namesake of Takeda Shingen, and basically all I know about any of that sort of stuff came from the anime Sengoku Basara, so I'm just gonna actually take the Wikipedia blurb about the actual man right here to get us all a little bit educated. And what Wikipedia says is, Takeda Shingen of Kai Province was a preeminent daimyo in feudal Japan. Known as the Tiger of Kai, he was one of the most powerful daimyos with exceptional military prestige in the late stage of the Sengoku period. Shingen had been a warlord of great domestic skill and competent military leadership. There we go, Tiger of Kai. 
That explains the big old tiger chest. So moving on to a size comparison, and there it is beside two high-grade Gunpla. There is a couple of master-grade Gunpla, the perfect grade unleashed, a masterpiece Optimus Prime, a robot Dimashi figure, and finally side by side with the High Resolution Gundam Astray, which I thought it looked kind of similar to before actually getting it in my hands, and it's absolutely nothing, absolutely nothing like it. So jumping right into the articulation, and first off I'll mention that this thing is so big I can't fit it fully in frame, so I'm gonna have to get in a little bit closer. On top of that, this thing is rock solid, I mean it is solid. I can shake the hell out of this and nothing will budge a millimeter. That metal frame is doing its job. First up the neck, we've got a ball joint. Up top, we've got a ball joint then inside of the torso, so we've got that full giggity 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 goo. We've got a moving flap segment up on the armor on the head. And if the neck articulation wasn't enough already, you can pull on that head to extend the neck and get even more for looking up, looking down, and all around. Next up then, we've got the shoulder armor. There's a whole lot going on with the joint, which is die cast, which attaches it to the shoulder. Each of the individual armor plates is attached via its own ball joint, so this can move a whole lot. You can move this completely back out of the way, and I'll also mention these did not come attached inside the box, so the option is there to take them off entirely if you want a more streamlined, less heavily armored mecha look. At the shoulder joint, the whole torso moves to allow the shoulder to move forward. This is a very nice joint, and even round back, there is detail in behind the moving segment, so it's not just an unsightly gap. Very nice. So raising the arm all the way up in the shoulder, armor can get in the way a little bit. For example, the unarmored shoulder right here raises up even higher. This is outstanding. On top of that, we've got the full 360 degree spin, and even that little bit of shoulder armor has its own three points of articulation, which is this flap, a front flap, and the same as the front flap on the back flap. Full 360 spin at the upper arm, we've got a double jointed bend at the elbow and this is incredible. Round back if you actually check this out, when the elbow bends you can see the piston actually moves inside of that. That is the upper bend, at the lower bend then it segregates the armor. Beautiful. Down then at the wrist, this is a double jointed wrist so we've got a kind of what I think is a ball joint in the lower section in here. And then as for the hand, we've got a hinge which allows it to tilt back just like so. The Tiger Akai right here has ab crunch for days. This is fantastic. Once again, round back plenty of detail underneath where it segments so there is no unsightly gaps. As for all the way out to the back, there isn't much just at the lower joint and we do have a ab tilt side to side. Pretty good. Full spin at the waist, 360 degrees around. Moving down to the skirting armor, the front skirtings are double jointed, so that means you can actually seamlessly move them up like this, not just swing them up. You have the option of swinging them up too. There's a spring-loaded mechanism in the crotch that, uh, yeah, I think it's there to, um, uh, make this not get in the way of the rotation at the waist, I think. These are quite easy to knock off at times if you don't know what you're doing. So there is some up and down and there's rotation forward and back. On top of that, there is a little joint that allows these to move out towards the back. But you kind of have to simultaneously rotate them towards the front in order for the armor not to clash and them to pop off. But once you move these out and get the hang of them, they are incredible. And speaking of incredible, this is the most premium butt flap I have ever seen. Not only do we have ball joints allowing them both to move independently, we've got these segments that can fan out like so, and if that wasn't cool enough, there's a full double jointed lifting mechanism that lifts the butt flap away from the mecha. So you can actually see through, and it keeps it right out of the way. Incredible and dynamic. Inside the hip on this, we've got a dropping mechanism which allows the leg to drop and swing forward for extra movement during the kicks. And speaking of the kicks, there's the kick all the way, wow, up to the front. Out to the back, it is a little bit limited and feels like it can't rotate back further than this somehow. And as for the splits, the Tiger Akai right here can pull it off, no effort. So as for the spin at the upper thigh, this does not go all the way around, but there is two joints to this, one in the upper thigh, one in the hips. So you do get a lot of nice movement in here. Moving down to the knee joint and once again, incredible again. This bends at two points, maybe even more. There's so much going on in here. When you bend this knee, you don't just get separating knee armor, you get more separating knee armor and separating thigh armor. This is one hell of a knee. We've got a little bit of a moving ankle armor. And I don't know how this is actually going to work out with something so big and heavy, but I'm going to try and test the functional movement of the foot 
keeping at least one surface still touching the ground, so to the front it is mind-blowing. So much movement in the foot. Out to the back it's equally as mind-blowing, and the side-to-side -side pivot is fantastic. Not as crazy as the front and back, but still fantastic. Finally down to the foot, and I've never seen anything quite like this before. The amount of articulation in the foot is ridiculous. I guess, why would a mecha have to follow the laws of nature, like it doesn't have to bend like a human foot. This actually makes more sense. You can get a nice bend up of the toe for those crouching poses and this, this is just plain cool. So yeah, there's no denying the articulation on this is ridiculous. And on top of that, the metal structure of the inner skeleton of this makes it so robust, so strong, so perfect. The only thing I could kind of complain about here is the fact that I can't get it to stand up. Hold on a minute. Magnets! This is gonna be a great test, those magnets. And what the hell? That is awesome. That is so cool. It is locked onto this metal stand or base or whatever. This, this is a game changer. I need to see more of this in future. That is so cool. So now jumping on to the accessories and once again there's an overview of absolutely everything that comes in here which is mind blowing so let's take a look at everything one at a time. Seeing as we've seen it already we'll start right off with that big old base. This is made out of metal so it is magnetic. The magnets in the feet of the Takeda Shingen right here are strong enough pretty much to lift this up but be careful. And we also have a couple of accessories for using with this, as well as a stand for some aerial poses, also magnetic, and a rack for the katanas, also magnetic. As for the expressive hands we have in here, the ones I've had attached to the whole thing so far is a fist and a widespread dynamic hand. You do have a pair of both of these in here, and the sculpt on these is fantastic. We also have a pair of relaxed dynamic open hands in here as well. And as for swapping out the hands, it's pretty simple. They just detach like so. They attach into this kind of little kind of hinge and they attach on pretty damn well. Before we move on to the weapons, there is one more optional part in here and this is pretty cool. So there's the head normally and this is with the optional big spiky almost oni like hair. To swap this in, it's pretty simple. You just pop off the back of the head and then just pop the optional part on like so and this Looks so cool. So now moving on to the weapons and first off we've got the pair of shorter katana. Even inside of the scabbards these are incredibly detailed. As for the attachment of these when they are not in use, we've got a multitude of options in here. And speaking of options, we've got options upon options upon options in this box. So we've got a bunch of different attachment adapters in here which can be put together in a kind of modular style way. So the first and most simple one is just these three pieces stuck together to make a little joint that attaches onto the hard point on the side skirting armor. You can just pop the scabbard into this and this is what it looks like. This looks incredible, holds on strong, has a lot of articulation in it, isn't loose or anything like that, and just looks badass. We do have two of these sets of joints in here, so that means you can do it on both sides just like this. This. Again, this box is packing in so many options, how cool is that? And if that isn't cool enough, we also have this simple looking die cast metal joint in here which changes the game entirely. You can use this to attach both of these scabbard holding joints together at the one time to create this double scabbard holding joint which looks so cool. Both the katanas on the one side, now that is some badass samurai shit right there. What can I say that is saying a whole lot without even getting this thing out of the scabbard. As for doing that, there is a little bit of a locking mechanism so you have to click it out first and then it slides out seamlessly like this and looks phenomenal. Attaching it into the hand is super simple, we've got a dedicated hand left and right for using with these. And just look at that, the detail on the blade, the paint apps are perfect and again, incredible. And if two awesome katanas wasn't enough, how about one more absolutely massive awesome katana? We also have another attachment adapter in here. In order to attach this, we just have to pop out this little segment off the rear of the armor, pop on this attachment. I will mention this does have the standard 3mm peg the rest of them do have, so that means it can be used on the side skirtings as well. Pop in the katana and that looks so cool. Also, I always like to test out whether or not a figure can actually reach its weapons or not and no bother right here. Once you pop it out of the scabbard it has the exact same awesome level of detail that the smaller katana had and that's what it looks like attached. Bad ass without a doubt. 
Did someone say not big enough? Well, how about this absolutely ginormous axe? In order to attach hands onto this, you just take off the top that kind of looks like a lollipop, pop the hand on, and I think it's about time to get this beast of a mecha up onto that stand. Now, this stand looks kind of puny for what is a whole honk of metal and plastic, and the shaft of this is actually made out of metal too, so it's, well, holding up fine. This feels great, actually. So now with that big ol' axe attached and it up on the base with the big ol' sword on its back, I'm blown away by how well this holds together. Magnetic stand, metal shaft, it's ridiculous. You can shake the hell out of this and nothing will, well, it drooped a little bit there because I was shaking it, but besides that, this is absolutely incredible. Everything about this is so strong, the paint even down to the minor details on the weaponry is all picture perfect, pristine. Once again, so, so cool, but I will mention one thing that is a little bit annoying. Yeah, don't drag the magnetic stand around on the base while it is attached to it because you will scratch it. Disassemble everything and re-move it around as you need to. Just, uh, don't do that. And if that wasn't enough options, we've got even more options. So pop off that big old axe head and we've got this alternate big old spiked spear looking top. If that's not enough, you can actually pop off half of this and then stick on half of the axe we would have seen originally. And if that isn't enough, we've got extra shafts in here which are a little bit shorter, so you can make two small axes. However, it actually turned out that I couldn't get the pommel end off of this long one, so uh, I've got one short axe and one long axe. But I guess if you wanted to with this one with no ends on it, you could also do this too, a double-ended axe. There's a lot you can do with this. And if that wasn't enough, this modular weapon system just gets crazier and crazier. Pop off the axe, get that big long shaft again, steal this little segment from one of the axes, grab the big old katana from wherever you kept it, I've it round back, and you can take the blade and stick it into the end of this to make a giant naginata. How cool is that? I mean, this is huge! There's the perfect grade unleashed for scale. There is a high grade for scale as well, just in case... You're not familiar with the uh, size of a perfect grade, but it's big. So anyway, that right there is it for the review. And what can I say? This is without a single doubt the greatest figure I have ever laid my hands on. Everything, every aspect about this is a solid 11 out of 10. It is perfect in every regard. Everything has been done with such care, fantastic engineering, and it goes without saying, but some people really poured their heart and soul into making this. It is... Perfect! Anyway, if you do want one of your own, I did get mine directly from Gundam Central. I will throw the link down there in the description. And as always, thank you so, so much for watching. Make sure to come back for more reviews, and I'll see you next time. As always, thank you so, so much for watching. Without you guys, all of this would not be possible. These videos would not be possible. And special thanks to those helping out over on Patreon and on the channel memberships. Including Mr. Winter, Joseph Kukluck, Tito Lewis, Gompla Chef, Bakito Official, Van Fon, Sean T, Caleb Engelhardt, Brian Perez, Tyler Sanders, and Craig Jerry.